All right, uh, Wilbon joining us on the Car X Tire and Auto Hotline. Uh, not a bad win, Michael, for the uh, Chicago Bears on Sunday. No, it was a necessary win and the kind of performance you want to see. You want to see, I'm going to say a dominating performance, but you want to see a thorough, complete performance against a bad team at home. And they did. They did what, you know, sometimes you do what you're supposed to do. And, and, and the Bears did that on Sunday, and now we can see what they've got against another bad team, but more talented and desperate and capable of doing something about it in a neutral setting. So we'll see how that plays itself out uh, Saturday and Sunday in London. Mike, do you like the games in London? No. Um, I understand why the league does it. I, I don't see the point. I know they can sell out anything that's a game. They've been trying to do this for a while now to peak interest in other, you know, international markets. I mean, it's, it's not pro football, the NFL, no matter what people think domestically, because they don't really examine it properly. It's not international football, meaning soccer. It's not basketball. It isn't those sports. And it doesn't have the international following. They've got their football. They know what they want to watch in England. Try. I go enough to have a sense of what it is that people are interested in and they can get, they can, you know, dial up the interest in the NFL a few times a year. But that's not what they do. And again, I get what the NFL is trying to do. You maximize your revenue streams. You create new ones. That's what we expect from, you know, leagues driven by marketing interests. Do I like it? No, I don't care for it at all, really. But you have to believe that Roger Goodell had a smile on his face knowing that the NFL owned the day on Sunday from about 8.30 mm -hmm. Central time. And if you factor in the delay because of the weather in Pittsburgh to about midnight yeah. Central time, like they had the, the center stage for n not just an entire day, but like seriously from the time you woke up to the time you fell asleep. Well, they do anyway, whether it's pregame shows or gambling shows, they have that. They have that. And Roger Goodell should have a smile on his face and all his 32 member clubs. That doesn't mean I have to have one. I'm not paid by the <laughs> NFL. So I don't, that doesn't really factor into my day. Um, and I will wake up again to watch a 930 game. I didn't have to wake up to watch the Vikings and Jets. I was flying from O'Hare on a 630 flight and landed in Washington in time to see that. But, you know, I'll certainly be dialed in with the Bears. Um, and that's what, that's what, you know, leagues now want to make themselves omnipresent in your life. All the leagues want to do that. Uh, the NHL has a triple header on right now as we speak. That's what leagues and their marketing people come in to advise on how to do. But you ask me if I care for it. Right. Uh, no. How do you feel right now about Caleb Williams? And are you willing to make any proclamations about him? No, 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 no. There's no proclamations. And people would have to be fools to make proclamations. Um, no, this is what, what, what did I tell you? Every time you guys ask me what I wanted from the bears this year, what did I tell you? Improvement. Yeah. I thought I, that's, I wouldn't give you a record. I just said improvement better from, you know, particularly from like weeks five to, uh, to 12. I want to see improvement. And then we're seeing that from him and from them. I coaches, you know, every phase of the team seems to be at least getting incrementally better, if not a lot better. So we're seeing what, we're seeing what I think, what I, we're seeing what I hope to see from him. And let's see if we can see it again against a step up in class. Not a big step, but a step up. I mean, you know, Jacksonville had expectations coming into the season. Carolina absolutely did not. So let's see where we are after having to play a pretty good, a better team on Sunday. After the, this game, the Bears have the bye. And then I think the game in D.C., I know it's out of D.C., but the game against uh, the Commanders is going to be the talk of the week in the yep. NFL. Or do you have plans to be there? No, I have planned not to be there. <laughs> uh, I don't want to be anywhere near there. Why? Uh, because, Sylvie, that's a novelty to you guys. You hate the stadium, know, too, don't you, I Mike? I know what goes on. The drive, the stadium, the game day. I, I, don't, I don't want to be – I don't want to have to – be indulged with, you know, what, I, what I'm going to call, you know, generations of Redskins fans, some of, what I'm, some of whom I'm related to. I don't want to fight with them all day and talk trash oh, and that's okay. be in their faces. And why are you a Bears fan after 40 years in Washington? Why would you change your fandom 
if you move tomorrow to another city, no, I wouldn't change. And shut up, idiot. I don't want to have to go through that. I don't want to have to. I don't want to have to deal with that. I'm not interested. So I will be comfortably. And if I went with my friend, I'm going to right now. I'm going to dinner with Commanders owners. Um, oh. Just dinner, dinner. So uh, these are guys I know, respect, like, am socially f- f- not just familiar. My friends. Do I want to go? Am I going to go sit in their box and wear a Walter Payton jersey? No, I'm not going to do that. You should. So I'm no, well, I'm not. And so no, I have no. <laughs> so, and it's bad enough that Northwestern's here on Friday night, and I, I I got talked into going to that. They play Maryland. That is not as big a pain as going to a Commanders game and dealing with that. So who is is this uh, Josh Harris? Who are you going out to dinner with? Just uh, unnamed Riskins owner. Oh, Riskins, so you got me doing that. Commanders owners, owners. Commanders owners. Hey, Mike, what, in your opinion, what's uh, five weeks in, what's the best story in the National Football League? Oh, oh, great question. I mean, is, um, it, is it the Chiefs? I think it's Jaden Daniel. I, Jaden Daniel. I know, okay. no, I think it's the, the Chiefs are champs who keep winning. I don't think that's ever the best story early. Vikings are right there. Uh, Jaden Daniels or the Vikings, either one. I mean, take your pick on them. Um, I don't know that anybody else qualifies. Another has been eye popping. Those have been the two most eye popping stories, right? I mean, I think it'd be pretty hard to argue against those two. Would you factor in? I mean, it doesn't have to be a positive. It could be a negative as well. And maybe this isn't a sur- yeah. surprise, but the Jets' turmoil and firing of their coach week five. Well, no, because I thought they were going to be garbage anyway. And so, despite other shows in the network to just babble who the Jets and tell you how a trade for Devontae Adams is going to make them Super Bowl contenders, that's all nonsense. And so I just thought the Jets were overrated, overstated from the first day of camp, from the from the last day of the from the day after the draft. It, 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 just the obsession with the Jets is a that's a thing driven by northeast interests, meaning up and down I ninety five where I happen to live and where they happen to live, and is is driven by that. And those interests are never early on interests of the Midwest or the or the Northwest or you know the Rockies. You're going to get that up and down I-95, in other words, New York, Boston. Um, you're going to get that in L.A., and that's it. You're going to get overstatement and overrating in those places every day by everybody who's on the air, period. Like I under- a great many of them are. For, and a great many of, of them played in those places and are from those places. And, you know, this is not new for me. You know, I'm, I rail against this all the time. Rail against it all the time. No, it's not going to stop. It's going to happen again next year. It's going to happen in the NBA. It's going to happen in every sport. That's that's the country we live in. I, I look. I I get annoyed by the Cowboys and all the talk about the Cowboys, but I understand. Yeah. But I understand it. Um, and and at least they're they've been decent year in and year out. The Jets bore the hell out of me, Michael. And they do. And, Same and, here. And then like just week in and week out, it seems like they're also on a network that isolates their game, whether it was this last morning for the London game, they're the Monday night. I think they're Monday night. This Are they Sunday night or Monday night? This Monday, 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 I think Monday. they're Monday. Yeah. And like, you just, you're agreeing with me right down the pike. Yes, yeah, yeah. That's my point. But you don't live in it. You come to it when it affects you two or three times a year. I deal with it every day. Every day. Every day. Not just the Jets. Jets, Giants, Knicks, uh, Nets. Yankees, Mets, all of it, all the time, everything. I've been, I've been, I've lived like that for for forty five years, and so, do I understand how it happens? Yes. Do I understand why it happens? Yes. Am I tolerant of it? No. I get to rail. I got platforms. I got a loud voice, so I get to rail against it and call people overrated bums if I want to, and that's what I do. Uh, you mentioned I take pleasure in it. You mentioned the Mets, Michael. Are you enjoying the Major League Baseball playoffs so far? Yes. Immensely. Yeah, it's been fun. Immensely. And they're great. The playoffs are great. They live up. Listen, the playoffs are underrated as a, as a whole. And these games, the Dodgers, Padres, people can stay up late enough if they're in the East Coast and even in the Central time. Stay up and watch, man. These games are contentious. They're brilliantly played. Um, wow. I, I, look, I wish, the only thing I wish that was any different is that I could hear Bob Costas and Ron Darling calling Mets Padres. You know, not that anybody's inadequate. These games are all just just well done. The broadcasts are well done. But Bob Costas and Ron Darling, to me, that's like being able to go and sit and go to the theater while you're at a game. 
and enjoy the game and the call of it. I mean, that, there's nothing like those guys. And uh, I got to cover Ron Darling when I was covering Major League Baseball. Mm-hmm. And he's just a brilliant dude. No surprise there. Yaley. And Bob Costas is, is among the best to ever do it. You know, with the, you know, I, I, yes, I know that there are the Vin Scullys and the Harry Carries and people who called games locally. But if I'm going to hear a game be called with no rooting interest and no geographic loyalties, I'll take Bob Costas anytime, anywhere, almost in any sport. But baseball particularly. So, yes, I'm enjoying the playoffs immensely. You mentioned Darling in the Mets. The Mets just took a 2 nothing lead, too. Wanker hit a home oh, run. Two, okay. Yeah, Ooh, ju- two just nothing a, lead. it's 2 nothing. Okay. So, so do you um, – are you a – you grew up in an era as a Cubs fan where we hated the Mets. Um, I hate the Mets. I hate the Mets. I hate them. The other day, I didn't know who to – I didn't know who – who was I supposed to cheer for between the cheese heads and the Mets? We made reference to this on PTI. Tony talked about it. He's like, I know your head's going to explode because you don't know who to hate more, the, che- the Brewers or the Mets. And that, yeah, I, I had a hard time. And I found myself actually, if I'm going to be honest about it, rooting a little bit for the Mets. Maybe the hatred's worn down, but it was renewed in 2015. It took us out in the sweep in the NLCS. Mm-hmm. So, so I, yeah, I, I hate them both. Um, and I don't like the Phillies. You know, I don't. I don't like the Phillies. I don't have a reason to hate them as much, but I don't like them. So Mets, Phillies, I don't have any sort of rooting interest. And Dodgers, Padres is interesting for me because I feel sort of naturally drawn to the Padres. But you know, speaking of owners, this is what happens. You know, you get old. You're not necessarily. You're not peers with players anymore. You're peers with the owners. <laughs> with and with Mark Walter, uh, a Northwestern, a purple friend, Northwestern. Even though Mark went to Iowa undergrad at Northwestern. Uh, graduate school alum and a trustee at Northwestern, and a, he's purple, a, a booster, and very involved with our sports program. Oh, wait, there's a field house named after him in Evanston on the lake. So, with Mark Walter and Magic Johnson owning the Dodgers, who do you think my loyalties are going to rest with on that? Yeah. Um, so, Your friends. You know, I, I, yes, with my friends, plural. Um, so, yeah, so I, I watch that with, with great interest and, and bias, and but I, but I don't. Like it's like I said, I don't have anything against the Padres. As a matter of fact, I find the Padres pretty charismatic. Um, and these games are so contentious, man. The series between the Padres and the Dodgers. Um, can't wait to watch. Can't wait to get. Can't wait to get to the next game. That that's, you know, what they what they, what they're putting out there. That's the best baseball has to offer. If you don't have a rooting interest, and you 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 can you can get into Dodgers Padres no matter what. Uh. Are you surprised, either of you, that Lonzo Ball is not available tonight for the Bulls' uh, preseason game? I, I don't know what the I don't know what the agreement is in terms of. I can't believe back. you're watching like you're looking for. Yeah, that, I'm not. Though. I'm not. I'm not. Well, I'm not. I watched a little bit of. I turned on San Antonio, Oklahoma City last night because I wanted to see if Wembanyama was going to play. He did not. He and Chris Paul did not. So then I should have turned it off right then. But Oklahoma City, who I think I'm going to pick have as my pick to win the NBA championship this year. They're just so wildly loaded. They're just loaded for bear, that team. And I wanted to see them, and I want to, you know, like, so here's a team that finished with the one seed in the West, the toughest conference. They finished with the one seed. And they added Caruso. They added, they, they get Holmgren in a second year. Okay, he could be like the most improved player in the league for all we know by Christmas. So you get, you get Caruso you get a whole group who's going into a second year coming off playing all 82 games. Okay. You know, load management for him. And you get a uh, Hartenstein coming from the Knicks. They're very Oklahoma city loaded. And so I want to see them. So I'm watching that. I'm not ready for the bulls yet. I, I you know, I'm just not ready. I was like, I got to convince myself to watch them. I will this week sometime. Um, but I, I'm not doing it tonight. And Lonzo ball, I don't know what the agreement is. Like how many practices do we need to have with contact before they put them in? you know, a game with contact. I don't know. I don't know what the agreement is. So I'm not going to be critical of what they're doing with him until I know a little bit more about the terms. Are, are you, uh, are you ready for the Blackhawks? They start yeah, tonight on no, ESPN. No. Do you see the scores by which they were losing their preseason games? I asked, I asked Carmen and Yurko cause they're like bigger hockey fans than us. Oh, Shame on you. Well, I know, I know we're the analysts, but as far as fans, they're the bigger fans. Um, but 
like how much does that translate, Michael? Like, does oh. does like oh. a, a score in preseason hockey translate into the regular season? I, I think when you get not a score, not two scores, right? But it's, when uh, you're <laughs> constantly seven to one and six to two and four to nothing, they were pathetic until they won that one game by a big score themselves. I don't know what it means. Like historically, I can't speak to that. But when you see those lopsided beatdowns, it's like, my God, what are we, are we talking about a third year of trying to get the top pick? Maybe, maybe that's, maybe that's in order. Maybe a third year is what the doctor ordered for the, for the Blackhawks. But my God, they're terrible. <laughs> terrible. <laughs> they look, I mean, they look White Sox terrible. They've given up let, 24 goals in their uh, preseason. I matches. know it wasn't a good preseason. It, let me ask you this: 24 goals in six games. Is yeah. that what it was? Uh, yes, yes, 24 goals Oof. in six games. Yeah. When you when you get to Chicago, if I would give you the task of finding a Blackhawks or Bulls game, would you know how to find them? You mean on television? Yes. No, I get no. No, I wouldn't. I, I I don't. And I I look. I don't have to get to Chicago, so I tried to get Chicago stuff on my television. I can stream here. Like, is it on Marquee? Is it on? What's it on? Is it on that new, that new the, channel started it, yet? It, it's the new channel CHSN. Uh, okay. The problem is, is it's only available right. They've only reached an agreement. Basically, they were with a, a couple of smaller carriers, but oh, with Direct TV. They still haven't come to an agreement oh. with with Xfinity. They have not come to an a, agreement with uh, YouTube. Um, there is an oh. o- over the air capability here. You have to over go over the up. air. What are we? Nineteen sixty four. Exactly. You have to what go. Is this, the honeymooners with Ralph and Ed. What are we talking yeah. about? Over the air. It, it's like sixty two points or sixty five point two or something. So, so much so that you've got to go buy an antenna to plug so in here. Yeah, you got to buy so an HD. Go to the, I can't watch them. This is like the nineteen sixties when Bill Wirtz put the Blackhawks okay. games on TV, on radio, only the second and third period. So if you joined the game on radio when I was a kid, you joined it in progress. You couldn't listen to the beginning of the Blackhawks games on radio. So what was, the, ra- what was the rationale of that? We that know people weren't going to come if they could hear the game on the radio the first period. It's crazy because we all know, like, in the 80s and how he would protect the season ticket holders, or so we yeah. thought, well, that, with, that, with, that, the, with that, the home TV. But this is radio. Media. This is radio. radio. And people don't think I'm making that up. Trust me, I'm not making it up. And I'm, I was such a Blackhawks fanatic. I would listen to those. I mean, those are the end of the, the – those are, those are Bobby Hall, you know, Stan Makita, Tony Esposito, you know, you know, Pitt Martin, Jim Pappen days, um, Keith Magnuson. I, the, the Blackhawks got to the – Semi Cup Finals in seventy one and seventy three, mm-hmm. and lost in the final. Lost Game Seven at home yeah. to Montreal after taking a two nothing lead in Game Seven. Yes, and so I was like twelve. I, I know those games like it was ten years ago, and it, I don't know. But now, but I couldn't find. You know, then you could. You knew. You, you knew. You, it's not a matter of couldn't find them. You wouldn't find them because they weren't offered. Now, really seriously, this is the state of. Those two franchises, that ain't good. Yeah. Michael, there were there were three things that I wasn't old enough to watch, but I was taught at a very young age by my grandfather and by my parents. Uh, and the three heartbreakers were the 1969 Cubs, um, the Blackhawks choking against Montreal, yeah, and, then, yeah, and then the uh, Mother's Day uh, massacre yeah. against the so, Golden State Warriors. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, was at, uh, I was at that. That was Mother's Day 1975. Um, yeah, I was at that game, um, game six, I thought the Bulls were going to win the Western conference finals against the Warriors that day and get to the finals mm-hmm. against, uh, Washington bullets. And, um, they might have even call the Washington bullets back then, maybe the capital bullets, whatever they were called, it was the bullets. But yeah, those are the three things you couldn't get over. There was another one earlier than that. So two years earlier, the White Sox had like, a, a, a two game lead with three to play and lost them all to the senators or something. Mm. They, they had the white Sox had an epic collapse in 67 before the Cubs, the Cubs collapse was just longer. It just yeah. went on forever. It went on for a month and it was scarring. That's why we still refer to them as the 69 Cubs. It was scarring. It really was. Um, and then, and then, yeah, you, you mentioned the other two, the Blackhawks game. Tony Esposito played like every game that year. He was just tired. He was exhausted. He gave up a 70-foot shot 
to Jacques Lemaire right. to give the Canadians their first goal, 2-1. And when they, when they scored that goal, you knew the game was over, up 2-1 in the second period. Yeah. And so, yeah, we had, we had, we had scarring stuff, man. When it, before you were born, I was old enough to be scarred by that stuff. And the Mother's Day game, which I attended. Yep, it's crazy. It's crazy. All right, well, have a great week. Have a great dinner with uh, whichever owner you're going out with. I, I think <laughs> I think it's the top guy. That's who I'm guessing. I didn't. I didn't say it was one guy. I said oh, I said the, the entire group. Huh? Oh, I didn't say that either. I said plural, mm, multiples. Look at you. So where are you guys going tonight? I, I, if I say that, I'm I'm, oh, I'm, I'm joking. Be in bigger I was, trouble. I'm joking. We're in, we're we're in Washington D.C. at like my favorite restaurant. I still can't say it out okay. loud tonight. I'm trying to like. I'm who's the other? Uh... Uh, you know, I've never been to Washington D.C. Okay, you you got me. Go. That is not. That's unfair. Okay, next state his place. next year. I've Come already on. I've already because of you know weddings and all kinds of stuff. 2025 is the year of me, Michael. And why uh, don't you come out to the game? Then why don't you come out to the game on the 26th? Uh, I can't do that. But next year, what? I am going to go to Washington D.C. and I'm going to do all the touring, like the your average well, yeah, tourist. You got to do it. You got it. That's yeah. what you got. You got to your first time. If you come in two in, in two weeks after the buy, I'll take you around and do it myself. How's that for an offer? That is a that, great that's offer. A and I appreciate DC, that. Yeah, you got to take them up on that. I don't think I'll take I, you around myself. Yeah, I, I, listen, I, listen, listen. I've got a <laughs> wedding. That, I've got a wedding. My daughter's getting married November second, and I've got a list of a thousand things that have to be done between now and then. So I that thank you. you. Need, that means you need a break. You need a self-prescribed yeah. well, break from the action. Yeah. The week before, you know, give yourself. Listen, you're not going to talk to too many people who can get you. I, mean, I know you where I can get you. I know. I can get you a private tour of the White House and one of the Capitol. Oh geez, you like that? Well, can okay. we do that you, in the off just gave season? You, know, you like that? Can we that? do it in the off season? I Depends who wins the election. Season. Um, actually, the oh, capital exactly. one will not depend on yeah. that. The White House one could. I don't know. I, you know, I'd like to be able to think I, I could make that happen because that's nonpartisan. Right. Thank but, you. But and, I would and like how about think. at the very least that we yeah we go see some some historic buildings and maybe have a you know a fabulous meal together? How about that? That's 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 easy. We, we'd like to start with those two yes. historical buildings. See, but yeah, I think we can pull that off. I just think you should do it sooner than later. I have to. I yeah, yeah. Geez, how can you turn? I'll, I'll go and steady you. Yeah, then. then do then do it. You go. I can't. <laughs> By the way, is is a Mitchell Rails included in tonight's Would you dinner? Stop! I'm, 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 I'm not <laughs> identify any order. <laughs> I can tell you this: Sylvie's now. Jack Ken the Cook is not going to the be owner. there. How about that, Sylvie? Listen, I can guarantee listen, you that. Thanks. If, if Jack is here, we got a news story. <laughs> <laughs> not to mention, I'll be running the hell out of the rest. Yeah, exactly. That's true.